I want to share with you some new information regarding the axis shifts of 2004, 2010, and 2011, and then go into how this ties in with the time frame coming up in the summer of 2014. I'm sure you remember on December 26, 2004, a 9.3 earthquake struck off the coast of Indonesia, creating tsunami waves up to 100 feet high, about as tall as a 10-story building, killing over 230,000 people. But you may not have known that during this earthquake, the earth shifted on its axis up to 2.5 centimeters, which is approximately one inch. This axis shift of one inch on December 26, 2004, occurred when Earth was on the side of the solar system closest to the constellation Orion and the star Sirius, which some scientists are now considering a possible companion sun to what many professionals believe is our own binary star system. If these scientists are correct in that the star Sirius is a partner star with our own sun, then it seems possible there may also be a circumbinary planet revolving around both our sun and this companion star. This circumbinary planet could be what the ancients called Nibiru, the planet of the crossing or the post at the turning point. The axis shift that occurred in 2004 in this area of Earth's revolution around the Sun may not seem extraordinary on its own, but five years later another axis shift occurred, this time three inches. On February 27, 2010, an 8.8 .8 earthquake struck off the coast of Chile, triggering tsunamis as far away as California and Japan and a power outage that lasted several days. As a result of this quake, seismologists estimated the length of the day was shortened by 1.26 microseconds, and the axis of the Earth shifted 8 centimeters, which is a little over 3 inches. The length of time between the 2004 axis shift and the 2010 axis shift was 5 years and 2 months, or 1,889 days. This averages out to approximately 377 days per each revolution the Earth makes around the Sun. This may not seem important in and of itself, but exactly 377 days after the 2010 axis shift, another axis shift occurred, this time 4 to 10 inches. On March 11, 2011, a 9.0 earthquake struck off the coast of Japan, triggering a tsunami over 133 feet high and killing over 18,000 people. In the aftermath, 4.4 million households were left without electricity and 1.5 million without water. The tsunami also triggered a nuclear accident, forcing hundreds of thousands of residents to permanently evacuate the region surrounding the Fukushima nuclear power plant. During this quake, the island of Japan was moved 8 feet to the east and the axis of the Earth shifted between 10 and 25 centimeters, which is 4 to 10 inches. This developing pattern of axis shifts led to the prediction that another mega quake may occur on or after 377 days depending on whether or not the hypothetical celestial object was accelerating. Then 397 days after the 2011 axis shift, on April 11, 2012, two earthquakes measuring 8.6 and 8.2 hit off the coast of Indonesia, very close to the 2004 quake epicenter. This was the largest strike-slip earthquake ever recorded. And while earthquakes measuring 8.0 or above on the Richter scale usually happen about once per year, 
two of them occurring back to back like that is unusual. Since the number of days between these events seemed to be increasing in 2012, it seemed reasonable that another significant quake event might occur at the very least 397 days after the April 2012 event, but probably later than that if the cause was a massive accelerating celestial body. Then on May 13, 2013, exactly 397 days after the April 2012 quake event, three X-class solar flares erupted on the Sun within 24 hours, peaking at 9.11 p.m. on May 13th. X is the highest letter classification for a solar flare. Then a week later, on May 24th, 2013, an 8.3 struck off the coast of Russia. This occurred 408 days after the April 2012 quake event. As I said originally, my thoughts about the axis shifts in 2004, 2010, and 2011 were that maybe there is a massive celestial object entering our solar system in the outer Kuiper belt, such as a brown dwarf star that can only be viewed in the infrared light spectrum. This object may have a long elliptical orbit, as some astronomers have suggested, or a figure eight orbit acting like a circumbinary planet orbiting two suns and only entering our solar system every several thousand years. This may be the real reason for climate change and other planetary anomalies that we've seen in recent years, such as the giant storm on Saturn and the global warming that is also occurring on Mars, Pluto, Jupiter, and Neptune's moon Triton. If a dwarf star has entered our solar system, then its magnetic or gravitational connection to our sun would be much stronger than the other planets in our system. And each time Earth passes through this magnetic portal of gravitation, so to speak, it may experience a figurative bump in the road along its path around the Sun. However, with regards to the pattern of unique events in association with this idea, they did not seem to hold in 2013. If the object was still accelerating, then it seems the number of days between the figurative bump in the road in April 2012 until the Russia quake in 2013 would have increased at least by a factor of 20 days like it did from March 2011 until April 2012. But since the Russia quake in May 2013 was only 408 days after the April 2012 quakes, an increase of only 11 days, whereas the previous increase was 20 days from 377 to 397 then either the celestial object is slowing down or these events are not caused by the magnetism of a massive celestial object. This is why I have not based any recent predictions on these patterns alone, except to say maybe another eight-pointer will occur on or shortly after July 6th because that's 408 days after the May 2013 Russian quake. However, I had to take notice when I saw that June 14th is exactly 397 days after the three X flares of May 13th, 2013. This caught my attention because June 14th, 2014 is a significant watch date this year based on a completely unrelated line of research that I've been working on in the past few years. For more information on this timeline, you can check out the links in the description below this video. But suffice it to say, in looking into the ancient Hebrew predictions, it has become clear to me that events are playing out exactly the way the text predicted they would. All of the events on this chart may or may not be associated with 
a massive celestial object in the Kuiper Belt, but I'm beginning to think some of these events may be signals from a higher intelligence. Could it be that from the perspective of this higher intelligence, three solar flares are akin to three emergency flares, signaling us to prepare for something our leaders have chosen to keep off the radar? Maybe these anomalies, along with other non-coincidental events of the past few years, were best summarized in the trailer for a movie that was released on March 11, 2011, the same day of the Japanese 9.0 and Axis shift. The taglines in the Battle Los Angeles trailer were, There are patterns that cannot be explained. There are warnings that cannot be ignored in 2011. Nothing can prepare you for what's next. For more information, you can check the links in the description below this video. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has been supportive of this work. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you later.